Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's August 4th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Brian, thanks for taking some time this week. Hey, Mike. Thanks very much. Before we dive into what was a very active week in the marketplace, I uh, do want to just give uh, viewers a heads up that at the end of this video, we're going to have a special interview with Bamster Laura Levenstein. She's kind of our ratings insider, and she's going to take a deep dive into the implications of the Fitch ratings downgrade of the United States uh, rating this year. They went from this week, they went from AAA to AA plus. Um, so stay tuned to the end of the video for that. But in the meantime, Brian, why don't we talk about uh, how the market reacted to that as well as uh, the other economic data they saw this week? Yeah, uh, certainly, uh, certainly an impact uh, on the market this week. Uh, we saw treasuries sell off, uh, and we really got to yields on the treasury side that we really haven't seen since November of last year, um, uh, really impacting uh, the, the curve, especially more of a steepening uh, where we saw less of an impact in the front end and long rates really selling off. So um, you know, that that was muted slightly this morning by a better than expected non-farm payroll number, uh, which came in at about 187,000 versus uh, analysts uh, consensus of around 209,000. So Let me jump, I'll jump in there for one second. Better than expected in this uh, context means slightly slower economy than expected, which reduces the chance of further interest rate hikes, right? Yes, yeah, uh, uh, good, uh, good to clarify that. <laughs> um, so you know, we we are seeing the treasury market rally back a little bit this morning, um, but certainly, you know, uh, still off from uh, from last week. Um, as of as we're recording this, um, the the thirty year treasury is is at around a four twenty eight, which is off uh, about thirty about twenty five basis points from uh, from last week's close. The ten year is at around. A 4.11, uh, which is a solid 15 basis points higher than last week, and the front end is, you know, kind of flat in five years, maybe up a couple basis points, and even lower by about five or so basis points in two years. Um, on the muni side, you know, with all of that backup and treasury rates, as well as he much heavier supply uh, combined with fund flows reversing from positive to negative, uh, muni's definitely uh, were a little bit weaker this week. You know, the front end of munis in two years was about 17 basis points higher week over week and then getting to, you know, 20 to 22 basis points uh, higher uh, in 10 and 30 years. Um, so uh, definitely a little bit of weakness. Again, supply was heavy at, a, at around 11 and a half billion. That's up from 6 billion last week, which was muted because of the FOMC meeting. But at 11 and a half billion, that's well above average for what we've been seeing this year. And noticeably, we've continued to see the uh, the trend of uh, the recent trend of uh, heavy PSF um, supply. So we saw about three and a half billion in PSF paper, which uh, which was definitely putting putting some pressure on um, on the high grade market. Um, for from BAM's perspective, we had a pretty active week. Uh, we priced over uh, around two hundred and forty uh, million in, in par insured. Um, some of the highlights for our activity included a fifty seven million dollar. Uh, transaction for Laurel School District in Montana, which was negotiated and priced by DA Davidson. Uh, we were also involved in a $31 million deal, deal for Lancaster School District in Pennsylvania, which was priced by Raymond James. Uh, and then in the competitive market, we were used on a pair of $28 million Salinas School District California bonds, which were purchased by Morgan Stanley and Raymond James. So fairly active week, um, up and down. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, we're looking forward to how the market develops next week. And just to highlight one other uh, piece of content on the BAM YouTube page, we have a new video out on our uh, state of Connecticut at an interesting transaction. They did not actually sell bonds, but they used a BAM insurance policy to free up money from their debt service reserve fund. That's going to be used to uh, seed the trust fund for the new Connecticut baby bonds program. It's a really interesting investment in kind of future generations of Connecticut uh, uh, children growing up into adulthood. Uh, the first uh, benefits we paid out, not for 18 years, but it's a really interesting uh, intergenerational investment. And, uh, and economic opportunity. Um, and so uh, we encourage everybody to check out that video uh, elsewhere on BAM's YouTube page. Uh, again, thanks for your time today, Brian. And we're going to hand it off to uh, my conversation with Laura. Have a great day. Thanks, Mike. Hi, I'm here with Laura Levenstein, BAM's Chief Risk Officer and our Ratings Insider. Uh, long career in ratings before you came over to BAM. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes today, Laura, talking about an unusual week in which rating agencies were right at the top of the headlines in uh, the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, because Fitch Ratings took action and downgraded the United States sovereign rating. Can you take a couple of minutes and talk to us about what that actually means in practical terms? 
Okay. Well, what Fitch did was downgrade the foreign currency rating of the U.S. government, not the local currency rating. The foreign currency really relates to an obligor's ability to meet foreign currency obligations, or foreign currency denominated obligations, um, as well as transfer risk and things of that nature. The downgrade was one notch. Um, it was made the rating consistent with S&P. And so two rating agencies now have AA pluses on the U.S. government and two have AAAs, that's DBRS and Moody's. Um, you know, basically, as long as the rating remains at a certain level, it doesn't have a huge impact on, on local governments. I think the Fitch rating is based on issues around governance, which have been longstanding now for the last 10 or 15 years, as well as concerns about the deficits and concerns about what will likely be a rise in debt to GDP over the next couple of years. So as you mentioned, BAM's major concern is on the municipal market. And you know, how does that work in terms of the, the relationship between the federal uh, rating and ratings on um, state and local governments? The U.S. Is, is somewhat unique in terms of the structure with local currents, local governments and that the federal structure, I mean, the states really impacts sort of, sort of how funds flow and the governance at the local level. In, in Italy, for instance, and in France, local governments are funded directly by from the, far, from the sovereign or from the federal government. In the U.S., it's really through the states that that all occurs and borrowing, et cetera, occurs through the states. So, you know, to the extent that there's some impact on fund flows from the federal government to the states, that could have some minimal impact. But it's unlikely for that to be the case, given the, the sort of minor change in the rating, frankly, um, and the fact that the U.S. still has market access and still has, you know, reasonable cost of funds to borrow. I think we noticed there are still, I think, 12 states that have higher ratings than the federal government uh, today. So that's that's not a cap necessarily. There, there still are AAA uh, issuers in the U.S. Yeah, there's not a cap because, again, the, those ratings are primarily local currency ratings. Um, I mean, the foreign the US states don't have a lot of foreign currency obligations, and they don't have a lot of exposure to, to transfer risk and such. So the foreign currency ratings are on the global scale. And, you know, it's not likely that they'll be impacted or be capped. Um, you know, it could, I think from Fitch's perspective, you could be see caps on some of the foreign currency ratings of some of the, you know, international, uh, you know, entities, corporations, you know, the, 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 you know, the big insurance companies, the big banks, et cetera, you could see some impact there in terms of capping. Um, but I don't think you'll see any big impact in the municipal market because there's no reason for there be, to be an impact. And just the last question. So you were at Moody's Investor Service for a long time. They are now uh, the, the largest rating agency, rating agency that still has a AAA rating out on the U.S. government. How do you think your former colleagues are feeling today? Are they, are they going to feel pressure to match this? Um, well, it's always interesting to see how rating agencies react to each other. Um, but I think, um, you know, the, the Moody's has been signaling for a while that they do have concerns with the governance issues, or, you know, and the deterioration really in governments, governance in the U.S. government. And with the growing deficits and other things, I don't wouldn't be surprised if they took some action in the in the future, given the sort of structural nature of the issues the U.S. is now facing. But I think in terms of borrowing costs and market access, the downgrades by S and P and certainly by Fitch now, have sort of any any impact is sort of built in already. I don't think there would be a huge impact from Moody's that taking an action at this point. Well, thanks for your time and insights today, Laura. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too.